And welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. Wow. Welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruby, and this is my review for Netflix's original movie, The Pirates, The Last Royal Treasure. Uh, it's actually a sequel, which I had no idea when I was watching it, and I still have no idea that it is a sequel. It seems to stand on its own two feet, but I'm here to talk about it. Non-spoiler, let's jump in. The sequel to 2014's The Pirate, this is an action-adventure film about a sea battle between pirates, bandits, and pioneers who search for a seal that disappeared in a whale attack before the founding of the Joseon dynasty. If you've been around the Ruby Tuesday for a while, you know that I do like to review world cinema. Um, I tend to gear myself or my channel towards that rather than just doing the generic English, uh, UK, or USA films. That is... I still do, but I really like to kind of delve myself into the Indian originals or, you know, China, um, Yugoslavia and whatever Netflix generally, because Netflix have a wide berth of what they're greenlighting. Not always great, not always brilliant. And somewhere along the line, you might be like, oh, another one of these. But sometimes you find these like gold or diamonds in the rough quoting Aladdin. Here we have a sequel, which I didn't know was a sequel, but I was excited to see this. If you go into this expecting it to be a really interesting, uh, thought provoking film that uh, applies logic to it, it's not that. What this is, is it two hours of escapism, of wire work, great costumes, great sets. If you're thinking along the lines of the Uncharted movie, if you've seen that recently, there's a big sequence with two pirate ships. That is along the lines of what you're going to get. So you have some CGI that looks great and you also have some CGI that isn't so great. And then you have your protagonists who are the good guys, but I didn't know how comedy the good guys were going to be playing their parts. When I was watching the trailer, it looked a bit tongue in cheek. It is definitely that, but it has more that quirky humor that you sometimes find in films like that. So rather than going down the really dramatic slow-mo style, they've gone for dramatic slow-mo comedy style, sometimes slapstick. And the, the jokes don't always come off like they're supposed to work or that maybe you're not going to get them because of the culture reference. However, I enjoyed it. I found myself laughing and giggling along because I knew kind of what it was once I settled in my mind within the first 20 minutes going, ah, okay, that's what this is. This is escapism at its best. Then you can enjoy the swashbuckling sword fights and the choreo choreographing and people flying and defying gravity in ridiculous ways. That's what this film is. Now, the story itself is pretty basic. There is a, a pirate treasure that has been lost and a bunch of people from various um, backgrounds want to fight it. They um, want to fight it, want to find it. And then there, there is like, you know, a little bit of a backstory between who is afterwards and, you know, where these people come from and how they know to fight and where they've been before. Um, I feel like there's a whole film that we missed because there is, but I don't feel like you need to have watched that to enjoy this standalone film because it feels like a standalone film. It's, it's a lot of fun. I don't know that there's acting to write home about. Like, no one's going to be saying that's the, the best acting I've ever seen. It's silly. It's over the top. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, people shouldn't survive when they get blown up by volcanoes or, uh, you know, whirlpools or even the stuff that you see that's happening underwater is a lot of fun. It's all adventure, but it's all making you as the viewer put your believability of what's going on screen to the side. Having said that, I thoroughly enjoyed what was going on. I thought it was really entertaining. The score itself is a standalone character here. It really feels like you're watching a bigger film than it actually is. There's a fair amount of budget on screen, but the score is big and lavish. It really helps you set, or well, helps the viewers set the tone of expectation of what you know they're getting into, what's gonna happen next. It does reveal of what's going to happen next, which is a little bit annoying. Sometimes that score will kick in first and you'll be like, oh, okay, now we're expecting a a fight scene or when it's suddenly hyping up you're like okay now it's a sword fight scene other than that i thought the characters were good the costumes were great the score in combination with what was going on screen was fun and the story itself it's like a one and done you can enjoy it it's not terrible it's kind of down the line so i'm gonna give it three nicholas cages out of five i enjoyed it for what it was not brilliant but enjoyable let me know your thoughts down below have you seen the original um, I'd love to know your thoughts now. Which is the better, this one or um, the obviously the original? Thanks so much for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday. <laughs>